Hello. I don't know what channel you're watching right now, but I felt like talking about total drama because it's something that really interests me. I'm gonna be a college student in like a month and I'm doing this on side of my bed. Why? Because I'm a teenage boy and the rest of my room is really dirty. <laughs> I don't want to get into it, but um, I'm really interested in this show. And the reason why I'm interested in this show is because they have so many, like, unique character conflicts within it. And personally, my favorite character is Trent. But we're going to be talking about Courtney today because she is pretty popular within the fandom. She has four seasons, so there's obviously a lot of material to go over. And I have a conflicting take on her that doesn't necessarily resonate with the rest of people that are fans of this show that talk about this show on a daily basis and that's that I really think that season five does a lot of wonders for her and that season two really isn't the best of her materials if you're not familiar with this show this probably might not be the best video but I uh, recommend you watch it anyways because it kind of gives me a point to why the hell I'm creating this even though this is for fun, obviously. But looking at these characters, like all these um, intense character drama, I really feel like it helps you understand you as a person more. Especially the character of Courtney, because the thing with Courtney is that she's really judgmental. And she, she has a lot of bad side. But in later seasons, in All Stars specifically, which I really don't think is a bad season, but anyways, I I kind of really identify with her in terms of how she seeks forgiveness. And even in like the beginning, where it's really hard to uh, adjust to a new situation, but you end up finding people you really understand, even if you do have your flaws, which we're going to get into in the next segment. I will preface this by saying I watched the entire show I got a notebook right here. That's probably the most of my credentials. But I will tell you this, um, just to start this off, is that don't really let anybody, me especially, because you're watching me right now, I don't know who else you watch within this community, don't let anybody really like change your opinion on the show unless if it like makes sense to you. Because I'm not really trying to tell you how to feel about this character. Wow. Uh, how to feel about this character, how to feel about this particular moment. But I, I do hope you give a bit of consideration as well, because this is something I, I really enjoy talking about. So without further ado, I'm, we're going to jump into the next segment now. All right, I just um, recorded this like 15 minute long thing about this whole first season and I didn't really like it. So I'm gonna record this like one episode at a time in order and then uh, just, you know, record the next episode and the next episode and just put it all into one area here because um if i go on and ramble on too much um it's gonna obviously wane um it's just gonna wane how uh compact it is for you guys and i'm not exactly the best at speaking for long amounts of time i sometimes trip over my words as i am right now and um if this gets on your nerves, I, I apologize. It's just, I'm not, um, you know, it's just how I speak as a person. So, episode one. Um, she gets portrayed as, like, this really dainty character. Princess-like, even, is what I described it here. And um, it's all about how um, she's, like, concerned of others, even. 
with Izzy uh, later hitting her head on the dock. And in the cast photo, I mentioned this in the cast photo specifically because I think stuff like cast photos, um, they really demonstrate what your focus is on the season. And specifically in this cast photo, she is with two people. Well, she's sitting with uh, Bridget, right? And um, I think that's notable because it's like her only friend. It's like canonically her only friend in this entire series. And um, I think that is, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, like how they demonstrate it in this sort of way. Um, I say noticeably Courtney barely gets any camera time in the first episode and by the first episode I mean like the first part of this two-parter and the reason why she doesn't really get that much camera time I mean crap scratch that uh I don't really know why she doesn't get this much character time it's like um really confusing because if you look at mainstays like Owen, Duncan, Lindsay, or Gwen is what I put here. Um, those four characters and specifically get a lot of time in this first episode of this first season. And I find that really strange because Courtney is a mainstay, but she doesn't necessarily get that much time um, allotted to her in this first episode. It's a new day, but um, we're going to get into this next episode now. This one, she has uh, a lot more character development in this part or not exactly development but like she has a lot more time on camera this episode which starts to um show her as this like uh big role that she does uh get into play in the series so she's not one of the people who jump as a part of the challenge which is to jump off the cliff into the sharks and you got to get into like this circle well i i don't i think it doesn't really matter if you get into the circle or not. That's that's for your safety, but if you don't, like, obviously, Justin jumps down and doesn't make it into the circle, and it still counts for him anyways. So Courtney decides to not jump, and she calls it a calculated risk because um, she's, like, starting to actually think about strategy, and she's, like, one of the only people that think about strategy in this game, but not necessarily, like, voting strategy, just uh, winning challenges. But this obviously shows her philosophy starting out as, like, don't really do anything that you're not comfortable with. And that doesn't really work in these sorts of sorts of situations. Because uh, at the end of the day, she is what causes her team to fall behind. And because Beth doesn't jump on the other team and DJ doesn't jump on her team. But even then, she decides to uh, not jump. And it costs her team the challenge. So... She 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 just keeps on whining throughout the rest of the episode about like splinters or uh bee sting. She's gotta band her team together and then uh, Duncan's like teasing her. It's pretty standard for what you'll come to know um of what Courtney's time is taken up of, where it's just her trying to be this leader and um in her Duncan arc, it's like Duncan just like messes with her and stuff. Um, I'll get into that later. I was, I'm gonna, at the end of this, I'm gonna talk about, after the end of this whole Duncan arc, I'm gonna talk about how I feel about it in general. But, um, yeah. <clears throat> at the end of the challenge, she gets called out for not really doing her part um and that's you know reasonably so but she's like no I'm a CIT I have my CIT experience and uh that's like a just sort of like a running gag with her character which I don't really um I don't really mind too much uh it's not necessarily it's kind of annoying after a while but you get used to it and, uh, 
Duncan continuously tries to get her to, um, well, he doesn't really try to get her eliminated. She, he tries to keep on bugging her, and eventually Ezekiel, <laughs> Ezekiel says some pretty stupid stuff, um, not, not just in, like, a communication way, because obviously, uh, you know, being discriminate like that is obviously wrong, but, <laughs> um, you know, just not a good strategy to go into a game where you have to vote people off is to be a jerk to everybody else. So Ezekiel gets eliminated and she has this, Courtney has this big scene where she's talking about how she's going to win the game and, um, how nothing's going to stop her pretty much. And this is supposed to be this big thing. Uh, but it, it doesn't really work out in her favor. But what it does do, and what I really do, do like, is it shows the contrast between Courtney and Heather. That they're pretty much two characters that are very alike in the same exact ways. But they're completely received differently because one's one's a jerk to just the people one's a jerk to just the people she doesn't like which is um you know rude but whatever and then heather's just generally a jerk to everyone even her alliance members so um i think this episode really does a good job at establishing her character as opposed to the previous one so i think something pretty cool about courtney All right, so now we're in uh, episode three, and I think something um, that we see brought to light in this episode is how she actually starts focusing on the challenges, because um, last time she completely ignored the challenge and just didn't um, really participate in it, and then um, this time she try she's like gets near the end but loses at the end but that's not really the focus of what courtney is going through at this time it's more about trying to do the uncomfortable because she doesn't want to end up in that position where she does um near like narrowly almost face elimination again and um she's actually like engaged with it and we see this character arc progresses with her, um, I think it's, uh, this is a pretty cool character arc, the one where, uh, how much she focuses on the challenge, because you don't, um, I'll, I'll talk about it when you, when we get to it, but I think it's something that really is developed well by the writers. And during this episode, um, Heather steals Eva's MP3 player, and tries to get her eliminated because she goes uh, crazy and starts being like a complete jerk to everybody on the campsite and throwing canoes and um, just generally being a terrible teammate. Um, and I got this quote here that I think is really, um, really cool. That speaks a lot to who Courtney is as a person. They eliminate Eva. And her, she has a quote right here. She says, See, I told you. You can't act like a total raging psychopath and expect everybody to just to forgive you. Uh, no matter how tough and strong and fast you are, she's never going to have a serious career if she doesn't get her act together. And I think that's... Um, it's obviously uh, a footnote in the whole, she thinks a lot about the f uh, future thing. And she, it's all about her career and what she wants to aspire to be. And she's a very ambitious teenager, but it's also about how, um, number one, she's exclusionary with how she acts and she feels like she can police everybody into how they act within the um within this whole setting and also i think the second part it just uh 
it gives you a bit more ruder edge a bit more sharper edge to um courtney that you haven't really seen before which is just her generally um being a nastier person to her fellow uh people on the camp not necessarily everyone just the people she doesn't like for example there's a moment with this with ezekiel uh eva who was eliminated in this episode and then um, I'll probably get to some more as we get to it. Harold, obviously. And, um, you know, it just shows, it just goes to show um, just how rude Courtney is as a person. This is where Courtney actually starts, this episode, um, Dodge Brawl, is the episode where Courtney actually starts becoming like a fully fleshed out character. And I really, um, I really, uh, like this episode because it goes through her character dynamics, how she treats other people within the team. Um, specifically, uh, one footnote, one major plot point that I really like that is subtle yet um, very interesting when it comes to, uh, the character of Courtney is her relationship with Heather and how there's a huge back and forth between her and, um, Courtney throughout this entire series. And it starts to come into play this episode, um, maybe a bit in the next couple episodes. And then we don't really see it for the rest of the season, which I think was a, um, a bad thing to not include because this ep this starts to show how everything is formulated. I forgot to mention last episode he since Heather was behind the whole MP3 player drama that she was she specifically got it got Eva eliminated because she was a threat to her team and she was really strong on the opposing team and Courtney starts this episode off by being like I can't believe we got rid of our strongest player and she starts regretting that and um Harold Harold since last challenge was a sleeping challenge they had to stay up um Duncan stayed up all the way to the end but Harold uh, had some problems, kept everybody up during the night, so Duncan barely got any sleep. Uh, this comes into play later in the episode, but since Harold made it hard for Duncan to sleep, he's going to be out for a lot of the challenge. He's uh, laying on the bleachers, and Courtney is Courtney is bothered by this obviously because you're a player down in a uh, in the competition. In the upcoming challenge. Um, so. Um, Courtney is like. Constantly taunted. By Heather throughout the episode. And also. Gwen to a lesser extent. Because Gwen actually has a reason. Heather really doesn't. Heather's Heather's uh says it's just for, it's just for fun just to mess with people uh which I kind of like I I kind of like that with Heather's character but um yeah Duncan Duncan sort of bothers her a little here and there this episode she is obviously the self-designated leader she's really into this whole leadership th thing throughout the episode she's messing she's like not really liking the input from Harold uh and Tyler because it it's used for comedy but it's also used for actual narrative sense where Harold and Tyler they completely suck at the challenge and bands everybody together to wake up Duncan and she says Harold needs to do it because he's the worst at dodgeball of uh, everybody except Trent which she means probably Tyler Duncan completely like um she he's really mad at first but after he starts participating in the challenge 
they completely wipe out their opposition. And it comes down to two versus two because um, they were bad in the first two. And then with Duncan, they won the next two. So they have this like really long dodgeball war. And then when it comes down to Owen and Harold. And Owen is like really good at dodgeball, you find out during the episode. And Harold really is not. So Owen throws these balls and um, Harold completely dodges them like Matrix style, uh, which is a pretty cool moment in the series. But anyways, um, so they call a timeout and they're like, we, well, we know you can't, we know you can't throw. So uh, we're wondering if you can catch it. Like they're completely <laughs> demeaning his abilities and he's just sort of going along with it. And um, he ends up winning the challenge for them. And it doesn't really seem... It, like, he gets, like, a lot of recognition for it in the short term. But later in the next couple of episodes, they uh, he really doesn't. And he's portrayed as useless uh, by Courtney, especially. Because we're getting back to Courtney here. But, um, you know, he's actually really putting these, the, the team on his back in a few episodes here. Yeah, um, I'm not exactly good with recording all of this on time. It's now, um, anyways, this challenge is like a big talent show, right? And, um, as Courtney is the leader... She starts being the judge on who's going to go on stage and whatnot. So during the whole thing, she becomes like really picky deciding who she wants and not. And eventually what it comes down to is what I realized. It's um the people she actually likes on her team, like uh, DJ and Bridget and, um, and Jeff. They're the ones that actually get a be in the talent show, um, just, just because Courtney feels like it, I guess, um, and it's weird because their talents all tremendously flop at the end of the day, but we'll get to that later. Point that's, like, really contentious for Courtney here is Courtney's violin gets busted when Bridget accidentally drops a stage light onto her uh it's like on some rope pulley system and it gets knocked loose and it all comes it all comes loose it falls on her and it breaks her violin and she's really like she really doesn't like it she was supposed to be in the talent show but uh that sidelined everything i guess that's what it was about but it was also just about her showing off her whininess as she always is as a character. And I think it's this is a really short episode for Courtney. She starts to lose impact from here on out. But Courtney has been downplaying Harold's talent this whole time. And we, did, we don't even get to see the guy audition even. But he goes on stage and does his talent because... Uh, Jeff broke his skateboard. He's like the only one who has a regular talent. And like everybody, process of elimination throughout the episode uh, gets knocked out of the running. So Harold is the only one left that can do this. And he completely saves everybody. And it's yet another challenge where Harold um, surprises Courtney and the rest of the team by actually being good at something. And he's actually being an asset to his team. But that doesn't really matter uh, to Courtney and the rest of her team. So this has been building up slowly throughout every single episode. But this is where everything starts to come together. Um, this is the episode where Duncan starts talking to Courtney like more. Like they start leaning into the romance angle of the relationship 
rather than just the uh, petty teasing, which is obviously had the romantic undertone, but they actually go into developing the relationship as a serious plot point in this episode. It doesn't come until like a lot of the way through, like a lot later in the episode than Courtney normally arrives uh, because she does get a lot of time, but this, this time she didn't get much time. Um, Duncan starts a scary story and she's like completely frightened by all this stuff. Why did I do that? My hair looks like crud like that. Anyways. Dude. Anyways, after the scary story is over, she hears an owl in the forest and it really bugs her. And she, she jumps into Duncan's arm, which is just like, you know, a moment within the show. Um, if you can't tell, I really don't like these characters together. Um, and I might talk about this when their arc is over, but um, I'll, I'll leave a part of it right now, which is just like, dude, I, I, I just can't with these guys. Um... Like, as I've gone through right now, she's gotten a lot of plot points that focus on so many different aspects of her character. When Duncan comes on, and throughout these other all these episodes, you'll find it's, it's all about Duncan. Courtney's entire arc is about Duncan, and I don't like that. And um, I really like Courtney when she's Courtney, not when she's with Duncan, per se. The tent gets burned down by Bridget, and then Courtney, predictably, shit, my arms look skinny, um, predictably, uh, Courtney freaks the fuck out, because that's just, that's just how she is, um, and so they sleep outside, and they wake up, and Courtney is laying on top of Duncan, and they come back, and Duncan's like, well, I thought, um, we thought Katie and Sadie were eaten by bears. And, uh, <laughs> turns out they weren't, and then Katie gets eliminated. Episode 7 starts with everybody being around the campfire, um, talking about their greatest fears. And Courtney will not, Courtney will not spit it out for the life of her, because she doesn't really... Um, she's really reluctant to give out information, um, regarding negative flaws. Like, um, she's really into the denial as a strategy, and we'll talk about that later. I feel like I keep on pushing things off, but, um, you know, this is all, like, interconnected within the universe of total drama and within her arc. Um, it seems like they really had this whole thing thought out from the beginning, and I really applaud them for doing all of this. But she, uh, she's just completely into denying all of her negative aspects of a person. It goes back to her old judgmental thing. She's, she wants everybody to be perfect, she wants herself to be perfect, and she denies everything that she does wrong, and when somebody else does something wrong, she's like, she has to point it out, and, um, it's just about her, like, just her perfectionist attitude within everything, and that leans into her judgmental nature as well, despite her trying to deny it we see in a moment that she just like freaks out when green jelly is there. So, um, that is her canonical fear. And then she's like, Dun Duncan was talking about how she was completely scared of his story. And then Courtney was just like, well, I'm just, I'm just humoring you. <laughs> don't, don't you think I'm just humoring you? And that goes back to that whole denial thing. And, um, 
I I think that's a good moment for Duncan and Courtney. I'm not a big fan of it, um, but it actually does have a part of who she is as a character, and I, I really do like it. Um, she gets she gets mad at uh, people like DJ and Tyler over the course of this episode for not dealing with their fears properly um and contra con uh, contradicting her treatment of her other teammates duncan gets a complete free pass and his fear is a lot more stupid than the other ones it's of celine dion music store standees when the other ones are like chickens and snakes um chickens are weird dude and <laughs> snakes snakes are like an obvious fear and being scared of chickens is a lot different than being scared of a cardboard cutout where you're not in danger whatsoever it's not even a living thing she tries to deny that she ha has a challenge but she does have a challenge and her challenge is to jump in a um a tub of green jelly from like a really high jumping deck it's like well it's not gonna make a difference so they triple the amount of points that you get from doing it and she tries to go up there and jump in the jelly and she she just doesn't um and that is uh one of her earliest instincts within the game you don't do anything she's uh, not comfortable with and that ends up losing her team the challenge but despite her losing the team her challenge she just um doesn't get any flack at all whatsoever for losing her challenge they just vote out vote off tyler instead because why should you be dude why are you scared of chickens and their fear is like staying alone in the woods and just basic everyday life stuff which is baffling to me you do not know how weird it is to being being alone in the woods as somebody who's like uh who's not in like a city who's actually um lives far from a city that that statement is just wild to me we get into episode eight uh you can really see the lack of camera time she gets because right here Episode 8. I can read this all out to you right here. Her canoeing partner is Bridget, and she talks with her about uh, Jeff making something for Bridget and is needlessly rude. That's summed up in one sentence. That is her arc in this episode. Um, and you see them cut down on Courtney's time. They're sa pretty much sacrificing Courtney's time to the relationship and the relationship she doesn't get anything out of it until later on and it's it's obvious they're not happy um as it goes on it's obvious that they're not happy and it's just this thing that is dangling over your head and you just wish it would end episode nine is also a similar situation it's even less actually this one, uh, this is the paintball one, and she said, this one is, Courtney locks antlers with Duncan, and when she is teased, she kicks him in the nuts. That's it. That's the whole thing. And that, this gets back at the point that they're unhappy, because Courtney is just, just horrible to anybody she's around. Um... Obviously, I, th I'm I'm playing this up a little. I I try to say that it really bothers me. Um, the whole physical violence or being rude doesn't matter to me. I think I think it's actually pretty funny in some regards. I I'm not really giving it that credit within my assessment here, but it strips away everything that she is as a character just to for her to do some offhand comment about her being 
her being rude to her fellow campers and i i just i just don't like that for courtney because there's so much to her character that i i wish it was i wish it was better than this episode 10 is the cooking one and they do have more time in this not a lot it's um so she gets stuck with duncan and um duncan throughout the episode his main plot line is like uh, the main plot line is, for the killer bass at least, is they put hot sauce in Harold's underwear, and they're like a complete jerk to him. Um, it's, do I like the plot line? I do. I, I do like the plot line. Um, some people say it's, some people say it's gross, and then like, D Duncan's just a jerk. But he's he's a really funny jerk, and I uh, I like him for stuff like this. Um, I'm not a big Duncan fan, but anyways. So she's, like, really denying spending time with Duncan, even though it's obvious at this point in the show that uh, she likes him. It's obvious. It's, like, apparent. Um, so just throughout the episode, um, Courtney and Duncan go into playful teasing and they s start to slowly go into what Courtney will look like at the end of her, um, at the end of her stay on the show. So I, um, we start to transition into when she eventually gets eliminated. She gets eliminated episode 12. Um, and now we're going to start with episode 10 right here. Er Crap, episode 11, I, all right, so we're going to start with episode 11 here. Uh, episode 11 is, um, it starts with Duncan stealing a mug, and Courtney is like, what the hell are you doing? It's going to, it's going to put our team in jeopardy. Why are you doing that? And then, like, it's cool looking, and I don't have it, okay? It's cool looking, I didn't have one, that is, after I took it, after I started being a smug douchebag, <laughs> and I, I just, I just find that really funny, um, it's weird that people say they don't like Ripper, but they like Duncan in season one, because Ripper is a lot, a lot like Duncan if you strip back, <laughs> if you strip back the idea that, um, Duncan actually knows what he's doing by being such a smart, a smug douchebag, and then a Ripper really doesn't, but Ripper is my second favorite character behind Trent. Anyways, with that little tangent aside, uh, Duncan is seen getting a new rabbit for DJ, and Courtney is witness to it. Um, so DJ gets his rabbit. He takes off his blindfold, unfortunately, which loses the team the challenge. But that doesn't that doesn't really matter. Um, what re what matters is um, Courtney's like you're actually a good guy, Duncan. Like um, it was really nice for you to get a new rabbit for DJ, and she's like, <laughs> he's like, I don't. <laughs> He, he would he wouldn't leave me alone <laughs> stupid rabbit <laughs> eh, which is um obviously a lie but it's like uh you know D duncan just being smug yet again and and courtney is like your secret's safe with me and she keeps on putting up with this facade that um you know how duncan really is like He's actually a he's actually a really nice guy, but I'm just gonna let everybody believe that he's an asshole because it's cool, and uh, I find that I find that kind of sweet that um, Duncan it, trusts her with these sort of secrets. Just keep on like uh, thinking to myself here. This is what this is about. It's just a whole lot of thinking to myself, and I want to retcon that whole thing about. Um, me not really liking this relationship. I do like it to a certain extent. 
when it just becomes um, Courtney being judgmental for the point of Courtney being judgmental. N nothing comes out of it. It's like, it just makes me want to get to the end. But when it's stuff like this, when it's we actually learn who Courtney is and she's willing to protect Duncan's secrets and Duncan actually really does care a lot about Courtney, but uh, he doesn't really know how to express it. Um, when we get to this level, I really do like it. It's really fun. It's a really good dynamic. Um, and I really do enjoy it. This is the last episode of this season. Harold's underwear is, ends up in front of Courtney as she's walking, and she's like, you're totally, you're so gross, which is fair. Um, but it does play into something later on that I'm going to get to. Duncan confronts Courtney on liking him. Uh, she continues to play into his bad boy persona while acting... Um, you know, just playing into the whole thing that Duncan's a bad boy. Um, she says this to uh, Duncan and Jeff and uh, all of his friends. And then we go to uh, Duncan stopping the challenge, the dancing uh, nighttime training challenge. And she's like really concerned and worried over what will happen to him because he's disobeying authority. Um... Something you'll learn about Courtney is that she's, like, a really, um, like, authoritarian, like, um, she appeals to authority a lot, is what I'm trying to get out there, and, um, it's obvious she's, like, a lawyer, and she wants to, uh, she's, like, a really bureaucratic-minded person that, she knows better than everybody else, and she, like, casts her judgment on everybody else. And that how this fits in is that um, she doesn't really like the fact that she's disobeying the authority of uh, Chef Hatchet, which will probably get make them lose the challenge. So then um, we go back to the kitchen for uh, after the dance is over. And then Jeff antagonizes Courtney about liking Duncan. She's like, he's like, um, you like him. And he's like, he's like, no, I don't. I don't like him. And then uh, they, they go back and forth. And then she's, she's like concerned within, with Duncan in these moments. Duncan goes to the boathouse. They meet up in the boathouse and they have this really nice scene about Courtney and Duncan and their idea on like rules and how you should like following them. So he's like, you always follow the rules. And then she's like, you, well, you always have to break them. And, um, she's like, well, I always have to follow the rules. Does that, that probably makes me a big uptight loser in your book, but it gets it to this point where, um, you know, she's admitting, she's admitting, like, um, she might be too rule-oriented as a person, and so then they go and steal food from Chef, and, uh, she starts tipping over the edge at this point to a point of no return. Kim and Courtney are talking outside of the cabin after, uh, Courtney throws up from eating too much sugar or whatever. And then, um, they share this really, this really, really nice kiss, and, um, this pisses off Harold, who's viewing from the window. Uh, that's kind of, like, the last straw for him, because Duncan's, like, his main en enemy. He doesn't have a crush on Courtney, which is, I, I'd find weird why he's mad at it, but I think it's, like, I think it's, like, an envious sort of thing, where he's, like, he has he has this good stuff happen to him and he's such a he's such an asshole um to me they lose the challenge and courtney uh is like you really need to take a chill pill to chef and like as she's already lost her cool her saying this is chef makes her makes him lose his cool 
they go to the elimination ceremony and we, it, we find out that Harold rigged the votes to get back at Duncan. And I think as much as people say that this is unfair, I find it as something that she has coming, she had coming to her. And this is about how she was so quick to antagonize other people on her team, despite them like Harold doing good in the challenges um, and constantly, constantly working into helping them within the challenge. Um, and she makes half of her team mad. Like, um, if you just think about it, Ezekiel, Eva, um, Ezekiel, Eva, Katie, Tyler, uh, Sadie, and Harold. That's six out of the 11 that don't like her. And just by doing that math, it's obvious why she would eventually get eliminated from something like this. Because, you know, she's really disliked within this cast. Um, and I, I think she had it coming to her. If, you know, if she didn't want to get eliminated eventually, um, obviously you can't predict, like, somebody going ahead and redoing all the votes. But if you're gonna, if you're gonna be a jerk to everybody, you, you might expect something like this to happen within, within this game. And I think she gets everything that she had coming to her. Here's the summarization of the event. It started off as a nice, well-meaning person, but by the end of the first episode, they forego that. She also becomes the leader of her team, but also at a price, which she starts to judge others within her team. I find this strange because within a numbers game, it makes sense to have more people within your side. Despite her slow start, she becomes one of the front runners of the series and quickly takes up a lot of the episode time. She has a great dispute with Heather within these first couple of episodes, which I think goes pretty unnoticed. This is when her relationship starts with Duncan and her episode time quickly comes to a screeching halt. This is fitting for her because as she judges other people, Harold judges her and quickly rigs the votes in order to get her eliminated. Harold is somebody who she tormented throughout the season, so it would make sense for her defeat to come at the hands of Harold. Alright, after that cheeky little, uh, segment, uh, I thought it would be a bit fun to do something like that, but, uh, it might come off completely differently. Um, I'm not going to be talking about um, Playa de Losers. I'm not going to be talking about... Is that what it's called? The one where Lashana gets voted off. I'm not going to be talking about that. I'm not going to be talking about the special. I'm not even going to be talking about the aftermaths. Because it doesn't really have much to do with her. So, um... She enters the competition at episode 13. Which, um like halfway through the season and I don't really like that that decision is really bad like extremely bad and the reason why I think it's bad is because she does not have the full time to be the main antagonist which she is in this arc but since she's since she um since she joins the competition, she joins like halfway through the episode. Um, she says she filed a wrongful dismissal lawsuit and won. And then Courtney is mad that she's not like the first prize because that's just how she is. She's got to be first. Uh, she's like um, hyper fixated on winning and all of her character tra character traits get amplified to a incredible degree in this season she, uh it's clear throughout this first episode how this is gonna be 
um, because she's already like, you know, she's calling people useless and she's um, pretty much taking over the entire team from within the first episode she even gets on the show, which is pretty, I would say pretty impressive. Um, but still, they were, um, it completely baffles me though, however, that they're halfway through the season. Never mind. She lose she loses at the end and because and because of her lawsuit she has immunity for the first vote. So in which case everybody votes for her just because because they're idiots. Um the but they all vote for her and then she votes for Owen because Owen ruined the challenge for them or whatever. And I find it a really cheap way to vote off Owen and I think it just sets her up as um a greater like antagonist role um but we will be talking more about her antagonist role at the end of the season so um this episode her she pretty much starts her time on camera by Chris explaining that she has like a long list of rules that she specifically has, like she uh, gets to eat lobsters with the producers and she gets to have her own bathroom and she gets all these privileges and she gets into like a little squabble with Duncan over. And Duncan and Courtney are like, it's, they're a lot more mad at each other for whatever reason. I, I don't really know. Um, as of first, it was, like, playful teasing. This time, they're genuinely um, mad at each other. Well, I think... I think the main reason why they're mad at each other is because... Um, Duncan was suspected to be hooking up with Gwen... Throughout the first part of the season that Courtney wasn't there. And that obviously made Courtney... That made Courtney mad, and, you know, I, obviously, um, I think the way that Duncan handled his time without Courtney even being there was so stupid. Why do you, why did he have to go out of his way to be with other girls, um, alone at night, and just, like, it seems really just, um, you know, it seems really reasonable for her to go to that extreme, but it doesn't really seem, I don't really get why she's going out of her way to be angry. Uh, she, she's like, all right, so the first challenge is to set fire to a campfire, and she can't do it, but, uh, and Duncan sets, uses a lighter for the other team, but um since it was to create the challenge was to create um fire with stone tools lindsay uses the flints and gets it first try and courtney gets really mad because um lindsay who is a pretty freaking dumb character uh lindsay who's a pretty dumb character starts it and she doesn't and she gets like um very very frustrated over this and i find it kind of funny and also kind of telling about um like we said last season how she made fun of harold a lot of the time and harold ended up completely like winning a lot of the challenge for the killer bass and he didn't really get that much respect from courtney uh or otherwise and then the last part uh, is probably when Courtney and Duncan are up there they're in the next challenge where they have to fight on these podiums and Courtney and Duncan they have these bones and they have to hit each other off and Courtney just like he just lays Duncan out and completely uh completely knocks him off the podium and uh it's played as a big deal it's really not <laughs> 
but um, this season has a flair for the dramatic, and the reason, it's really strange and out there, and the reason why I don't really like this is because nothing really happens. There is some, there's stretches of episode, like three episodes in a row, where nobody gets booted off, or there's like an insane long line of reward challenges, and it's just really, it's just really stupid, man. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I really don't like the writing direction that they took with this show. Um, it's, it's really not for me in this season is what I'm trying to say in this season. I don't like the writing direction. Episode 15 starts with, uh, Beth stealing Courtney's PDA and, uh, goes to the TDA website and she sees this video of Beth. I mean, not Beth, but Beth sees this video of Lashana talking trash about the entirety of the cast, which um, I find is a uh, really interesting detail because um, I, I watched the Switchy video. If you haven't, you probably should. But it's funny how that happened like episodes like a, a good amount of episodes before and they talk about only the contestants that show up at the time and even courtney who wasn't even on the show at the time which i find kind of funny but this plays into it because um courtney gets mad at D uh, beth for stealing her pda but she lets she eventually begrudgingly lets everybody see it and then uh, Courtney and Duncan wrestle in the in the uh, ball pit. It doesn't. I don't necessarily. I don't necessarily uh, care all that much about this episode for her. It doesn't really do much for her at the end of the day. Um, it's just some Courtney Duncan moments where she's just getting mad at Duncan and being an absurd jerk. I don't really like Courtney that way. All right, this is episode 16, and this is a really big episode for Courtney because not only does it set up her position within the merge cast, but uh, she just generally gets a lot of screen time in this episode, screen time that she didn't have in the three other episodes, even in her introductory, introductory episode, which I find strange. But... Courtney does, like, some insane, like, gymnast-type shit to get the stuff to escape um, the building within the start of the episode um, because she, hold, um, she holds everybody hostage inside of the tower, um, which I find uh, really fitting of Courtney's character. But, um, it doesn't really, it doesn't really fit char Courtney's character season one. It really fits her characterization in season two. Um, and when I think about how this fits into her season two characterization, it's just about how she's just a really cutthroat mean person when in the original season, she actually... She might have been, like, really judgy and um, mean. And I've been saying a lot of negative things about Courtney. Don't get me wrong. But she was this... She was very likable. I think she was a lot more likable in that season than this season. And then when you see her purposely go out of her way to make every single camper's life a living hell... I... I just don't get it. She she only got in people's way when they got in her way. And I just, I find that really relatable. But at this point, why? Why is she doing this? She has no motive to, obviously, well, obviously the money is a motive. But to just be a jerk is... um 
be a jerk for the purpose of being a jerk doesn't really make sense for her. She tries to make everybody get and give her half of the prize money, and eventually when they all get out of the tower, it doesn't even count anyway, so it's like, what the po what's the point? So, Courtney and Lindsay both win the challenge. They, uh, Courtney wins the first part, Lindsay wins the second part, so they both get, um, they both get winning privileges, uh, not necessarily, it's a reward challenge, and this, I, I don't like this, the fact that, number one, there's two, I mean, I guess there can be two winners, but, uh, the big problem with all of this is just, uh, why have the, why have the reward episode anyways? It doesn't make sense. I, I feel like if you're gonna have a, a bigger cast, maybe you should go ahead and do that. They should have had all these characters at the beginning. We don't need all these return characters. We have all the characters at the beginning, and they find a way to hash everything out. But the formatting of this season is just very bad for Courtney and the rest of the cast, I, I find. Because it doesn't really lead to any arcs. It just leads to these moments of um, characterization. And specifically in action is bad characterization. I think it's the worst characterization in the series. Um, and that makes it the worst season, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, we gotta, we gotta move on through this. So, the guys form an alliance and... Um, the guys, meaning Justin, Harold, and Duncan, who are the three at this point in the season, and Courtney's not really getting along with the rest of the cast because she's just generally not been good to them. Um, she becomes a cricket superhero, um, um, she loses to Lindsay, which, like, really makes her mad because um <laughs> Lindsay just copies Wonder Woman who is a actual superhero and she actually is creative with her design so Courtney completely destroys the challenge um like it's even a surprise dude um it she she just wins everything this season I hope you know there is not a single time she doesn't have immunity or it's a reward challenge or aftermath until her final two episodes within the season. I really think that was disastrous for her to because it doesn't she doesn't abide by the rules of if you somehow do something that doesn't make sense within the bounds of the competition or you don't have some reasoning as to why you don't get eliminated that round because somebody did worse. There's a bigger, like, there's a bigger issue um, afflicting the cast. Or there's just not, no reason for them to not go. Then, um, she just, um, she just doesn't play by the same rules that everybody else does. By having so much immunity, only two episodes near the end, like I was talking about earlier. Um, the fact that she doesn't have to play the same exact uh, politics and try to be nice to everybody or just tone down how she how she is a bit just to get along with everybody more or strategize around this or tell people how to vote. The fact that she wins every single challenge is infuriating, to say the least. And I really do not... Um, so... So, Courtney completely lies to Harold because, um, Duncan, te Duncan tells her to do this. But she completely lies to Harold to vote off Lashana. And they successfully do that. So... She's starting to 
rack up more and more eliminations. If you couldn't tell at this point, she's supposed to be a main antagonist type of character. Um, which is another thing I don't like. Uh, there's a lot of things I don't like about this season. I hope you are beginning to find, which I really liked your character in Island as much as I did complain about it. This is episode 19, and um, to say that she has a lot of screen time is an understatement. And what I can do to show you this is, so, I have had, like, I did multiple pages for the island, but it was, like, three pages. And this is episode 19. This is just episode 19 right here at the bottom. Um, so we got this bottom of like a small fraction of this page, but so the rest of the season, it, this page only takes up, um, one and a half episodes right here. And this takes up two and a half, I would say. And then this is another half and the conclusion. So there's a lot of material we're going to get into. If I miss something, it's just it's just obvious because I have all these notes. I'm going to miss something, not cover something. But it just goes to show you how much they were trying to emphasize the role of Courtney in this season. Um, why is that special? Because I I feel like they were really lacking. Um, Courtney, they chose Courtney in specific because she was a pre-merge character. I, I think she was a pre-merge character. She was nasty. And other than Duncan, she didn't really have that much plot in the first season. Um, the plot she did have was completely overhauled and forgot about the writers, which was the whole drama and back and forth that she had with Heather. But, um, to go, to get back at those points I was making is that she chose them to be nasty because they needed to find a main antagonist within this season. And Courtney felt the bill very well um they tried to do this with justin but it was very half-assed writing which is another problem but that's that's for a different video if i ever make a justin video or if i even make another video ever but <laughs> um yeah they just needed to find somebody to fit the slot and courtney fit it well um, so then they make us forget about all this great plot development that, um, I felt like they, that the writing from Island was building up to, and they overhaul it just for her being, um, very, very unlikable in my opinion. You might like, you might like this, but I, I personally really don't find her enjoyable in this season she gets on my nerves the entire time i was just waiting let's get to world tour let's just get to world tour and um the reason why i say this is because when she's the point where she's enjoyable in world tour is when duncan's not there when duncan is not in the same place as courtney she's more enjoyable is what i find and i I find that crazy because all of her screen time revolves around Duncan. Um, but, you know, when she's not with Duncan, she becomes a lot more relaxed. She becomes more willing to forgive people. And you learn to the extent of where all this... Uh, to the extent of her nastiness and meanness because to say that she fits this main antagonist role 
is putting her in a group with Heather. But to put her in a group with Heather, that means she's willing to be mean and nasty with everybody. She was never like that in Island. She got along with at least a part of her team, which was Bridget, DJ, Bridget, DJ, Duncan, and Jeff. And there is nobody she gets along with. She doesn't even get along with her own boyfriend. And that's the tipping point. That's the end of her... Um, that's the end point of how much I like her as a character in this season. Every, every sense of, uh, relatable friendship dynamic, lover's dynamic, whatever, is stripped away from her. And I find that to be a shame. But anyways, after that tangent, we're gonna get back to episode 19. So, the campers are running... The campers are running these reality shows, and Courtney calls it reality show itis. Um, Justin starts talking. Justin starts falling in love with her, and Justin starts talking to her. And this is a conversation I find very interesting. Justin asks how she combats her flaws, and then uh, or deformities is how she he likes to put it and that really gets on her nerves and she's like deformities i don't have any deformities and justin is like denial okay <laughs> um i really i really like this for justin and for courtney this is a really good moment for them um and to for her to just plainly spell out that um about her denial uh is really is really cool I find because we've had these undertones for a while that she is in denial um because she is a very perfectionist sort of person she is a perfectionist within the series it um and it it gets acknowledged within this episode, and I find that very cool. So they try to find out who's the princess, and they go right to Lindsay because she won the last challenge, uh, part of the last challenge with Courtney. Uh, so it, it doesn't fit her because of this whole drawn-out skit about her foot being big and nasty and whatever so courtney tries it on and she squeezes it on there she squeezes it on there and it comes flying off but she's still technically the princess for this challenge uh just justin is uh talking all about how um they're gonna be the prettiest couple in the kingdom and so, and Courtney is really falling along with it in this episode. She's going along with it. At the end, they have to they have to fight, and Justin says, "I'm not gonna fight her." And then Courtney says, "Well, you know what? I just can't. I just can't give away immunity." So Justin just hands her immunity to, after making all these enemies, but. And Courtney reveals that she was just trying to make him follow along with it the entire time. And he did. And I think that was a smart move by Courtney. And I think this was a really good episode for her. Um, but um, I really, I really like Courtney and Justin as a couple here. I'm not going to lie. It's, just something you don't get with Duncan, you get here with Justin, which is an actual um, nice, pleasant relationship dynamic. Um, even if you know Justin does try to talk, court talk talk to Courtney about her 
deformities and bother her in that way. But um, I, I really like it in this episode. All right, so this episode starts with, um, this episode starts with Courtney. This episode starts with them getting a USB that they put into Courtney's uh, PDA, which she does reluctantly. But um, what then they Lindsay finds this finds out that they might be using clues to. Um, they might be using clues to tell them where to go. Uh, obviously, she she thinks they're buried underground. They need to get spoons and dig a uh, dig, uh, dig Chris up. I think they're thinking that uh, they gotta find Chris. And then um, Courtney puts it all together, and she realizes that uh, Chris is. Um, Chris is in the bank heist uh, location. So she goes there. She puts in the code that Chris tells them from the video. And she's keeps on asking for a prize all while putting Lindsay down. Which is... Um, the thing is about her putting Lindsay down is that she... Eve, Lindsay, to her credit, she still found out, like the idea for clues, right? And, um, she, she just goes, um, she just, uh, decides to be a bit of a jerk there. And she keeps on asking for a prize with the, uh, during the episode and Chris won't give her one. And then, um, She's supposed to get a print from every... They're supposed to get prints from every single camper. Um, one person is supposed to get one print. That's all they need. But she decides to get two prints because she just she just couldn't help herself or whatever excuse she gave to uh, do that. It doesn't necessarily matter, but I, I, I kind of find it uh, funny when it comes to her character. And... So she has two prints and she finished the first challenge. So she keeps bothering Chris about her prize and she's really whiny, but in the end she gets it. She gets a bag of Cheetos and she eats them and she's like, they're my exclusive cheesy prize snacks and nobody else can have them. So then Chris dies. Well, Chris dies. It's a rubber dummy as you'll find out, but they're supposed to find who the murderer is, and they realize that they find a green hair near the body, and so they get Duncan, and they, um, they arrest Duncan, and that, that makes Courtney mad, but, um, uh, the sh Lindsay's trying to find out the whole secret behind it, and she's playing along with the whole theme of it. And yet, Courtney is not really playing along with it. She's just like, Chris is not dead. She he's probably just not even dead. And then they find this napkin with Cheeto dust, and they say it's the murder weapon, and um, they try to, like, he try, she tried to, like, suffocate Chris, and, um, so Lindsay blames Courtney as the culprit because they have the fingerprints, and she was the only person who had the cheese snack, which the dust got on the napkin when she held it, so she blames Courtney, and Lindsay gets it, uh, Lindsay gets it correct. It's a reward challenge. So this is another form of immunity that Courtney gets, which is just, it's just so great. It's such a great mechanic that one character has immunity for almost every single episode she's in. But Lindsay decides to, even though her friend Beth, her best friend on the show canonically is Beth, 
and she can bring her to the movie. She decides to bring Duncan, and she brings Duncan because it messes with Courtney, and Courtney absolutely loses it, and she gets really mad, and um, I think this episode was definitely more about Lindsay than it was Courtney. Um, but this episode still matters to Courtney, as in she becomes very whiny, and I think the plot armor is just, it just reveals itself here. It's just so obvious. She doesn't, she's not really dislikable here. I, I try, I'm not trying to find that this whole whininess thing gets on my nerves or anything. I think it's, um, a bit funny but I also think that But I also think that um, they do a really good job at portraying her as being really annoying. Um, and I can completely understand if it gets to you. It doesn't get to me. I, I think the other stuff where Courtney is just a jerk for no reason really gets to me. Because that's not with her characterization. And stuff like her being whiny about this sort of stuff is. You know? But overall, this is a good episode for Courtney, and she gets a lot of screen time here, which I really like. And as we progressively see this thin down, she expectedly gets more and more. She expectedly gets more and more screen time. So here in this episode, which is episode 21, um... Owen comes back, and Owen comes back by suing, suing the, suing the competition, and Courtney's like, that's not fair, but it's like, by the same exact means, well, what she thinks is the same exact means that she did, uh, Owen actually comes back as a mole, as we find out in this secret plot line, um, we learn that Courtney used to be uh, in a band and she's really good at guitar. So she plays all the notes perfectly fine. And then Duncan just like hits a couple of the notes and then smashes his guitar. And Duncan wins the challenge despite Courtney playing all of the notes perfectly. And the reason why this is significant is because you real uh, you realize the main problem with Courtney's tra cha um, challenge strategy. She doesn't really. Um, she always wins the challenge at the end of the day, but when it comes to the first challenge, she doesn't really get it. And the challenges she does fail. She just doesn't play along with everything. She takes it too serious, and um, the point of action is to play along with the themes of whatever the challenge of the day is. So, um, I find that, I find that, um, one of, that's one of her flaws, but that's also revealing towards her character because her perfectionist nature believes that you do this and, uh, then you win the challenge, but it's a lot more subtle than that is what we, come to find and I think that's uh, a pretty cool it's a pretty cool thing that they put in here which I do like about action is that the winner plays along with the challenge and it's not just you do the challenge and you win so now Courtney now the whole thing about the red carpet is Courtney just goes as fast as she can she's dodging all the paparazzi and 
next Lindsay wins because she's like she's playing it up for the camera so this all amounts to within the last challenge um Courtney Courtney's just getting infuriated over the challenge and um in this last challenge Courtney just wrecks everything and I think Courtney just absolutely destroys everything and I think it's um you know, just, oh my gosh, Courtney wins yet another challenge. This is insane. This is uh, episode, this is episode 21. And since episode 13, so it's been eight episodes where her team has had immunity, including an action epi uh, aftermath episode. But that's still eight episodes without Courtney even being up for elimination. And that's just, <laughs> dude, make it realistic. Make it something that's like, cause I think what made Heather so infuriating as a villain and somebody who you wanted to hate was because um, obviously she was a jerk to the entire cast. She was like that way from the beginning. Courtney doesn't have that. Another thing that Courtney doesn't have is Heather strategically um, avoiding elimination by somehow some method and just game planning around everything, which Courtney just doesn't do. She gets this insane plot armor, wins everything, and it's just not a good sequence to watch. Um, it's not really, you know, that that cool. Uh, to see. So, Lindsay gets eliminated. She's like a foil to Courtney, like a rival of sorts, and she she leaves, so it's just like um, yet another... It's not, it's not even caused by Courtney either. She loses because Lindsay votes herself. Uh, anyways, that's, that's a pretty big Lindsay moment and uh infuriates a lot of people when you talk about that elimination all right so this episode Courtney tries to start an a girl's alliance with Beth so but they're kind of argumentative or um in some parts they're just playing around with each other and as Courtney puts it, she's counter-counter manipulating Beth. Um, and so they're taken to the forest and she prepares Beth for her challenge, which is to beat up Harold. They lost the challenge and they have to, um, they have to, um, cook a meal for the boys and then Courtney tries to convince, do everything to convince Beth to be in alliance. Not a big Courtney episode. I said that she gets a lot of, um, a lot of camera time within all these episodes. This is the exception. This is the only exception. And it's a reward challenge. No elimination. Wow. In incredible. This makes me feel amazing. <laughs> reward challenges were such a worthy implementation of this show it's it's totally not like it ruined the pacing forever but anyways all right so this episode it starts off with everybody getting a special reward from home um and owen gets this trophy for being student of the year and courtney's really mad she doesn't get it her her present is some, like, something of, like, her debate team and her partner didn't really, like, work with her. So then she did it herself and she's like, this is why I have to do everything myself or something. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't care less. Um, and Duncan receives a pet spider, which she... 
uh, he pays a lot more attention to the spider than Courtney, and Courtney gets uh, jealous over it. <laughs> They, so they win the challenge where you have to, they win a challenge where you have to spend, uh, I think self problems or like spend the night in like a weightless simulation. And before Beth tries to tell her to consider, look at the challenge and then consider, but then she just, she just out of the blue decides the order out of nowhere. And that puts them in a really really bad spot um so So this challenge is the Vomit Comet, and um, obviously people start vomiting in it. And since the order they chose was Courtney and Beth being last, and it was really hard. And Beth is so sick that she just does it anyways. She just goes out and she rides in a vomit-covered suit for just immunity. Immunity in a vote that she probably wouldn't have gone out with anyways uh because she has courtney who everybody hates to an extent i mean duncan probably wouldn't vote duncan probably wouldn't vote courtney but uh you know beth harold and owen probably would so there's that so she just rode in vomit for no reason but um this is the end to their short-lived alliance, which started last episode. So, um, it's kind of funny that this, like, in during their alliance, they didn't even vote to uh, vote with each other at any point in their alliance. So, it's, oh, why even have the alliance in the first place is what I'm saying. All right. So, this episode uh, is episode 24. This is the episode she gets eliminated in. Thank goodness we're out of this. I really did not like doing this section because I don't like total drama action. Um, maybe I'll do an action review someday. I don't know. I think it's the worst, the worst season in the entire series as a whole. And um, I can make a full in-depth list of reasons why. But I'm not going to go into it this episode, this video. Um, she starts off the episode by making a list of wrongs with Duncan and it makes Duncan like really, really lose it. And then she's, she's completely taken tr control over wh whatever Duncan does. She picks a shark for her animal buddy and Owen starts sabotaging it. So then they go into the water and it takes like three days for them to get back to the camp. They get back to the camp. Uh, she sees, she gets like a message from her PDA, which she didn't have like the entire time. So she sees her PDA and it re they reveal that Owen has been the mole the entire time. So we get to the elimination ceremony and in a surprise double elimination, Courtney gets eliminated by, uh, she gets eliminated by Beth and also by Duncan. And, uh, the other elimination is Owen who gets eliminated because they reveal him as the mole as, uh, because Chris says it, it's there's no point in having a mole if he's already figured out or something like that. It doesn't really matter that much with Courtney's plot. It just uh, it, it just kind of ends this episode. <laughs> Let me get this straight. Courtney got into the season by suing the production. 
uh, character traits of se uh, whining, self-centeredness, and generally just being a jerk were at the center of her character this season. She had an incredible amount of immunity until in the end in which she got voted off. To think that there's anything to this season besides Dunk Me or moments where Courtney is being over the top is a bit, um, is a bit presum presumptuous to say the least, let me tell you that. So, I think we can find that this season, Courtney has been a bit of a jerk, and this is by far not her best work. Just give it some thought, give it some it never worked out. Think about the shit she put you through. You should give up, she's leading you on. I know she's not the one. Alright, so, I know what you're thinking. Season 3. This is probably the longest season that will probably be in this. But, however, um, there's a couple of things that make se season three really short. Uh, even though it is the most amount of episodes she's gotten, it's not uh, the most amount of care, uh, camera time. Because World Tour does a lot to balance it. And also, Courtney's just, in the grand scheme of things... Everybody thinks that Courtney's very important in this season because of one particular moment. She's not. She doesn't get that much camera time besides what we're going to be talking about. But I find that really interesting, to say the least. Because we've gone through two seasons where they've she, she has been solidified as a member of the main cast. But... She's just kind of a floater in this season. Um, don't get me wrong. I still really like her. I know a lot of people out there don't like her in this season. I think her being in this season was... Um, her characterization in this season was good. It was very good. Um, but like I said, when I was talking about how short it is... You know how I had, like, uh, three pages? I had, like, three pages for, like, five episodes. This is one page, and this is 12 episodes. The first 12. So I'm going to go off this in order, just because it'll make everything a lot more easy. All right, episode one. This is the two-parter. I didn't split it into two parts this time because it doesn't really matter for her. Um, it, her biggest thing about this new season is that um, she she's really glad that she gets to express her singing talent, which um, uh, I this is an unknown fact, but it's unknown. For the people who don't obsess about this show, um, Courtney's Courtney's act voice actor is a um, some sort of jazz singer, I think, I believe. And um, for her to be excited about something like this, I think it's really nice because um, it hints at the fact that her actual her actual voice actor is um a singer in real life and i find that really cool uh what's weird is that even though after the se after last season they've canonically broken up in the season and in the special that we're not really going to talk about because it doesn't matter but even though them being broken up, they still, Duncan and Courtney still act like they're together for the time being for whatever reason. I, I, I find it very strange. Uh, but I, I don't, I don't know. She starts conflicting with Heather on who the leader is within her team. And I, I think that's a pretty good dynamic. I think that's a really nice dynamic. The fact that they brought that back from the first season was honestly very interesting. I'm glad that they brought that back because um, 
it gives some it gives somebody for Courtney to work against as opposed to Duncan which makes me very annoyed I really don't like her working against Duncan or like Beth where she has to pretend to be friends with her or whatever you know it's it's just it's not a whatever plot line as in uh what what she has gotten in the past and I I really do like it uh, that it's more in the center this season in episode three because that pretty much covers everything in the special um very short for I mean very short for two-parter my bad two-parter this is um she got did not get that much time in the two-parter and because it's a two-parter um you know that's kind of strange but we get into episode three and she starts to have a power struggle for um leader and we get to see courtney gwen and heather they all clash on their ideal like perspective and this is where uh court oh, this is where it reveals her ambition towards being a leader as actually being a flaw as well as a strength um the strength is obviously her determination to win but um her flaw within all of this is that um when you got somebody also as abrasive as like uh heather is or um people who aren't willing to work that well with a team like Gwen. It really tests your leadership abilities and Courtney does not have those leadership abilities to that caliber. So Cody, Cody just miraculously solves it for this team. And that's episode three. Episode four, I wrote this down. She does nothing. Nothing in this episode at all of significance. Episode 5. Courtney is mad at Heather and wants to eliminate her. I think it's because... Um, well, I guess something did happen last episode. She, Courtney gets the sled first and they, she has to drive everything. So they start whipping her. And... Courtney's really mad at Heather for this, expectedly, but, you know. They win the challenge, and Heather gets to choose the prizes or do whatever with the prizes because she was the one who led to the win. But what ends up happening is that she throws out the meat grinder because she doesn't think it'll be useful or whatever, and Courtney gets mad about it. Episode 6 is an aftermath episode so that doesn't really count uh episode seven courtney is mad about the grinder as it would come in handy <laughs> episode eight courtney does nothing episode nine courtney does nothing it's really weird how they cut down on her time it's it's crazy okay because we're already halfway through the season and this is only eight minutes of footage. It's going to be a lot shorter for you guys. Um, the other seasons, they were like, they're a lot shorter. And I'm, I'm already at like a hundred minutes for them. And this is about as long as one of those seasons in terms of episode length. And I'm only at nine minutes of footage. It, it says here. All right, number uh, episode 10, Courtney messes with Heather about her obvious crush on Alejandro. Um, and this is a bit of foreshadowing on my part. I noticed this because I just wanted to foreshadow it a little bit in this in this video. I, I, wonder, I wonder how this could come into play. <laughs> um... Heather calls Courtney a bitch. That's the next thing on my... That's the next thing on here is that Heather calls Courtney a bitch. Um, 
That's for trying to be the leader in the situation yet again. They hallucinate Duncan was on a rock. They go up to there to see them. And as a result, they're not really a part of this challenge because they go up and uh, hallucinate Duncan as a rock. And that, as Sierra puts it, that makes it obvious that she really wants to see him. I still don't understand why they flip-flopped like this. This doesn't make any sense to me. But what I do like about this whole, um... What I do like about this Dunkney plot is that him being out of the way, it makes Courtney a lot more refreshing. While watching this, I enjoyed Courtney's, Courtney's arc a lot more, even with all of the negatives I hate and how she sometimes can take over a scene and completely ruin it. There's none of that this episode, and I'm I'm really thankful for it. <clears throat> uh, Courtney shows concern over Owen and Izzy after being crushed underneath a plane. So Owen and Izzy get crushed underneath a plane, and uh, she's like the only one that checks on them. And this is a nice revealing moment of sympathy from her. And this makes you feel bad for what's coming up. And then episode 12 is obviously an aftermath. So that big section was not not really much, but it was refreshing to her as a character. It's a, episode, it's a stretch of episodes I really like about her, even if she's not on screen that much. But obviously, after episode 13 and beyond, we start to get into some, uh, we get to get into some uncharted territory and it starts to get a little bit kooky. So please, uh, <laughs> please, please bear with me here is what I'm trying to say. I, I think at least. So after the aftermath episode, um, Courtney and Gwen, well, they came back from the Jamaica episode is what it canonically is. So Courtney and Gwen, they start becoming friends because Courtney helps her out with her sunburn. And it's one of the main focuses of this episode is the bond between Courtney and Gwen and We'll see why the writers did this in a moment here. It's going to be, um, everything changes. All the dynamics change within this episode. Uh, you just got to, you just got to be patient until it all just blows up in everybody's face. I, what I put here is that it was, um, it was really nice seeing Courtney make actual friends because she doesn't make many friends within like the entirety of the series. Like I said earlier, Bridget is her only canonical friend um, within the fandom, uh, and it's really it's really strange that um, somebody that is supposedly makes makes it so far. She doesn't really make it as far as the other main characters, but still, somebody who does a lot within the series. They just don't have that much friends. The only friend, she only has one friend, and that's from season one. Um, so they fail, they fail the challenge, and they get, Dun the, Duncan's performing there, because he was, um, he's been hiding for the entirety of the season so far. So they find Duncan, they, gra they put him in the bag, and they win, despite the fact that they didn't even do the challenge, the... Chris is really, really hot. They actually did the challenge, but it's whatever. Um, Duncan gets put on the boys' team, and Courtney has this moment where she goes up and hugs Duncan, but Duncan is talking to her loosely, but also talking to Courtney, I mean, Gwen at the same time. And he, it was mostly about how he misses them. And Chris... Chris... Um, off screen, he broke the lock into the confessional. So, um, 
Duncan goes into the confessional and he kisses Gwen and Tyler finds out about it. And this is where everything blows up because Courtney and Duncan are still supposed to be boyfriend and girlfriend, despite that being broken. But I, I digress. I mean, if they're if they're willing to still be the way that they are portrayed, I I still would take Courtney on the side that they were that they were still boyfriend and girlfriend at the time because if 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 you're not, then why act the way that you do in that circumstance? Why would you um? Why would you treat Courtney as if uh, she is um, as if she is your girlfriend? So I find that very strange. Episode 14 is a really good episode within the series. Um, I mean, so is the last one, but I, th I think this is a good episode just based on how everything falls out. And it starts with uh, Courtney and Gwen talking about Duncan and she's like completely oblivious. But uh, during the episode, she catches on more and more and more. Meanwhile, since I would I talked about how Tyler was also a part of this, that he was a witness to Duncan kissing Court. I mean, Duncan kissing Gwen. My bad. In the last episode, um, Duncan like starts threatening him, and he makes uh, Tyler makes a deal with Alejandro, and Alejandro. Alejandro tells um, Tyler to expose their secret, and um, it's exposed that uh, Gwen kissed uh, Gwen kissed Duncan, and it makes everybody furious. Uh, they they don't want Cody to participate in the challenge so that they can vote off Gwen, but Cody does anyways, and he wins. And um, at this point, there. Courtney is just extremely furious over the course of everything and it um it, this is a real a really big turning point for her um but this is sort the rest of the season is sort of a transitional phase into her getting into her all-stars dynamic despite her having a lot of time still left within this season episode 15 starts and Courtney starts to flirt with Tyler and um because of Alejandro and it and he she does it because it uh messes with Duncan and um and Alejandro starts talking to Tyler about Courtney and Tyler's like, you know, I can't do that to my Lindsay. I, I really like that moment for Tyler, but that's this isn't a Tyler video. Um, if it was a Tyler video, it wouldn't be however long this is. Let's let's just say that much. I also wanted to put in here that in the first season, it's shown that she doesn't really like Tyler, but for some reason, he makes the most sense to flirt with the I I think it's because of the time that they spent away from like the show or whatnot but uh it's just a bit of a contradiction i i found i don't think it matters too much it's still you know somewhat of a realistic plot line for courtney to take um she drops the best the best signal ever i think x um was it boyfriend kisser is the best Total drama song ever. Uh, I I really like the rock and all of just it's just a great song all around and I really like it. Um, <laughs> now I put here, uh, she tries to fuck Tyler and it hurts Duncan. I don't know why I put it like that, but. Uh, I'll probably put in the clip if um, I do put in any clips at all. Um, Courtney starts sabotaging her team and trying to eliminate Gwen. And C 
Courtney is obsessed with taking out, out Gwen uh, out of this competition at this point. Um, she's mad at them booting Tyler, so then she, like, kicks Tyler off the plane. She's like, people are gonna pay. Two people in specific. And, um, yeah. So, episode 16. This is a long one. I need to think. This is the Australia episode. I think this episode is Australia. Um, Alejandro and the rest of his team try to figure out how to get Courtney and Heather booted off. And Alejandro starts trying to flirt with Courtney instead of Tyler. And this really... um. Uh, Courtney starts thinking of it as a strategic decision, but as we later find out, it's like she has like some serious romantic interests, and uh, this starts a really big feud between uh, Courtney and Heather, like it was supposed to. So Courtney tries to lose, but Alejandro uh, is trying to um, help her win. And Courtney's, Courtney's like, uh, well, I don't really, I don't really want to win. So she, he helps her lose, which I, I find is kind of, um, funny. Cause it's like a, uh, conflict in their interests. And, um, Duncan and Alejandro fake argue for Courtney. And then Courtney starts falling more and more in love. This vote, they try to make it seem like Courtney's going to go home. But Cody gets disoriented somehow. And she votes, he votes Sierra instead. So it's a tie between Gwen. The two people who voted Gwen were, I think, I think it was uh, Courtney and maybe Sierra. Maybe Sierra. And then the two people who voted Courtney were Gwen and Heather, which is a weird pairing. But she she really, Courtney doesn't really, I mean, Heather doesn't really like losing, so it makes sense with her. So since it's a tie, there's a tiebreaker challenge. It's to feed eucalyptus to a koala, and uh, this is like the fastest tiebreaker challenge ever. Um, Courtney, I mean, Gwen's allergic to eucalyptus leaves. So that leaves Courtney being able to fill it, finish the challenge before her. This one's a bit short because Gwen is now kicked off. But uh, Alf flirts with Courtney and it annoys her. Um, Courtney and Heather fight to uh, whatever, what to build. And then Cody just builds Gwen's head. And it's a big plot point in that episode. And the next episode is an aftermath. So it's not really too important at all. So episode 19 is the episode that Blainly gets introduced into the cast. And um, it's officially Merge. So none of the t team dynamics with her trying to uh, not try on the challenges and stuff no longer apply. Alejandro and Heather are grouped together and Courtney starts targeting her for elimination because um, it makes her mad that Al and Heather were a team on this. Also, Heather's just really annoying to Courtney overall. Duncan keeps directing her in the wedding gown challenge, uh, just like um, making her fall into mud or, you know, just messing with her just, just because he can. Um, and then Al directs Courtney to win the challenge. Uh, Duncan and Courtney win, and then they get mad at each other. And that's, like, it's really not much. But um, now we get into the final episode of her. She doesn't get, this isn't uh, too pivotal of an episode for her, but it is a good length. Tries to make an alliance with Courtney, but he's, uh, they're no longer, uh, Courtney's just like, nah, I'm not doing that. And 
throws him into a cake, you know, which is, uh, it's got good comedic timing on that scene. I'll say that much. And then Courtney try, they have to choose vehicles and then Courtney chooses a trike and she gets stuck into a crack. Um, Alejandro, Duncan and Alejandro talk about loyalty and, uh, I think a really nice quote from that d uh, dispute is that Duncan says, she doesn't have any loyalty. Trust a guy who's tried. Um, I think that's, it's kind of weird. That's kind of weird for Duncan to say of all people, because they were supposed to be boyfriend and girlfriend by the way they they were acting which i find was strange and then duncan's duncan saying that she doesn't have any loyalty it's it's weird for him to talk like that uh but, but anyways um duncan fires off another quote and it's really good and then uh another quote the quote was um so they see chris on the phone and uh, Duncan says, if it's Courtney, tell her she's a loser. And that that just strikes me right in my funny bone. That's right up my alley. Uh, I think that's funny um, for Duncan and his character. And Courtney is mad at Al, but she eats the Chinese food because uh, Al doesn't really Al doesn't really do that and helps him survive. Heather catches them cheating, and then her and Blainley uh, get eliminated because they tie within the vote. Courtney didn't really receive that many lines of dialogue at the beginning of the season, and with Duncan not being there, she didn't really have anybody to bounce off of or have interesting character moments with. Courtney is still obsessive and judgmental, but not to the degree it was in the previous season. She makes friends, is kinder, and starts taking everyone into consideration within the season. Her best friend is Gwen until Gwen ends up kissing Duncan. Courtney spirals out of control as she flirts with Tyler and later Alejandro. This makes Ale this makes Courtney relying on Alejandro and leads to her death. This is a good season for her and takes a lot more reasonable of an arc than last time. But her interactions with Duncan are so tiresome that I'm glad Courtney is single within the next season. That many lines of dialogue at the beginning of the season, and with Duncan not being there, she didn't really have anybody to bounce off of or have interesting character moments with Courtney is still obsessive and ju judgmental but not to the degree it was in the previous season she makes friends is kinder and starts taking everyone into consideration within the season Her best friend is Gwen until Gwen ends up kissing Duncan. Courtney spirals out of control as she flirts with Tyler and later Alejandro. This makes Ale this makes Courtney relying on Alejandro and leads to her downfall. This is a good season for her and takes a lot more reasonable of an arc than last time. But in her introductions, uh, but her interactions with Duncan are so tiresome that I'm glad Courtney is single within the next season and for the rest of her time on Total Drama. All right, so we're now in this new season, but um, since there is a bit of a time skip here, 
Uh, we skipped over Revenge of the Island. So this season is All Stars, and it has about, I think, seven characters from the last season. Those characters are Sam, Mike, Zoe, Joe, Lightning, Cameron, and I might be forgetting somebody. Uh, oh, Scott. Shit, he's like the most important character for this review. But anyways, motif, like the, um, they decide to split up the teams in heroes into villains in this. And, um, a lot of what her arc has to go through is the idea if she's a hero or if she's a villain or just the general route it takes. And I find this to be really interesting because not only do does the people watching the show they put uh, the characters into hero underdog like some sort of superlative category um but the show is also doing that for us as well and we get to see what their reactions to being a hero or a villain or how they react to that um, within the show and I find that as a really cool idea because it confronts you with your actions and how people perceive your actions within the context of the events or even how the producers themselves uh, context because Courtney gets put on the heroes team and she's not for us people who watch the show she's not really a hero she's more she's definitely more of a villain um if anything especially because of season two um season one she had a lot of villainous character interactions where she argued with um the other team and she got people eliminated and she had that really weird speech within the first episode but within the third season, it seems like she's more of a hero there, especially because the mean negative character arc is like the some, something bad has happened to her. She's not doing something bad to somebody else that puts them on their character arc. Um, and I find it interesting. Are we, um, it doesn't really seem like they're taking how they're taking what they have done over the course of all of their seasons because Gwen's on the villains team and Courtney's on the heroes team but it seems like they're taking their how they were in, within the last season and within the context of the last season Courtney definitely was a hero I would say um or at least not a villain I don't think she was a villain she was um she was more care. She wasn't characterized as villainous in her revenge. How she was getting her revenge. She was more characterized as just being really hurt, and um, I think that's really, I think that's really thought provoking within this show, and I really like that direction. A lot of people don't. A lot of people like Duncan and Courtney, and I I can't really blame you for that. I think they're decent. Uh, but the, like, man, man, it, it just gets, it just gets so stale and boring and really bad after a while. Um, and I'm glad that good, that, I'm glad that we're done with that. So after we did all of that setting up for the next season, I'd like to, oh, one more thing. I almost forgot. It's a 13 episode season, so we're going to get a lot faster into it. And I think that works a lot better for Courtney's character cuz you don't have to you don't have to write her being having so much immunity. Courtney has definitely had some of the most immunity within any season ever because she's always on she's always put on the winning team. Uh, besides her first incarnation, and obviously she lost pretty quickly, so that makes a lot of sense. So, I'm going to start here. We're going to get into the episode one. Uh, episode one, um, I started off by noting also 
how good the graphics were this season. I think it really pops. The colors really look nice. Um, and just looking at fit footage of the show, I think it's incredible the art direction that they've taken over the course of the season. Um, Courtney starts this season by wondering why she even came back. Courtney is weirdly on the hero team, despite her being, as Heather puts it, uh, in the previous season, a bitch. Uh, <laughs> she, she glares at Gwen and blanks Duncan, and, um, she has some, she has a really nice quote here that I really like the direction that this quote puts her on for the rest of the season. And I think it really makes her relatable. People say that Courtney is aimless over the course of the season, and I don't really see it. This quote right here, it puts her on the track to forgiveness and forgiving her enemies. And we'll see how that plays out over the course of the season. Um, she says, what's the point? He never listens, and besides, it's over between us. He's a bad boy. I knew it couldn't last forever, but Gwen, I thought we were friends. Last chance I ever make that mistake. And that's really cool. That is really cool right there. That quote, because the thing about that quote is Courtney's not that forgiving of a character, but as we see she becomes over the course of this season or over the course of the show, she becomes a forgiving person. And that's, that's what I really like here. Um, so we're going to, we're going to continue into this. Uh, this line makes Courtney as a character, the delivery the arc, everything leads up to this, and this is a really good line. No one on the heroes, no one on the heroes, uh, can decide who the cart driver is. So uh, Courtney just forces Lindsay to do it, um, and Lindsay completely fails, and Sierra jumps on Courtney, making her have to push two people. Alejandro comes back, and uh, everyone freaks out. But Gwen tries to um, Gwen tries to apologize to Courtney, but uh, the flowers she has, um, Courtney is allergic to. Um, on accident, because she she didn't purposely give her those flowers, uh, like to make her allergy. She's just like trying to be forgiving. Um. And I find it weird for Courtney to be, I mean, Gwen to be forgiving because she did this. And when she comes back, she says she wasn't technically, he wasn't technically her boyfriend at the time. And the way that they were acting, it seems definitely that they did have romantic interests at the time that Court Gwen kissed Duncan. So with that in mind, she also tries to guilt trip everyone. And she's like, well, even though I technically didn't do anything wrong, we're supposed to just believe that Gwen is in the right here because just because of who she is, who we see her to be. But um, I think that's where we get her wrong. That's where we get her wrong as a character. Because for her to go up to her like this and say that she didn't do anything wrong and still apologize about it, it just lacks sincerity in all honesty. And I'm not, I'm not mad at Courtney for not forgiving her. It makes a lot of sense why she wouldn't forgive her because it doesn't seem like Gwen really cares. You know what I mean? He's on the chopping block for putting Lindsay up for the driver. And um, Lindsay ends up going home because, uh, you know, if it's such a liability that you're the driver anyways, that it makes... Um, it, then you just shouldn't be here because you're just hurting your team in the challenges. But at the end of this episode, I think we start to get a really good grasp of what Courtney is going to be like this season. And it's something I really, it, it's something I really enjoy 
um, just seeing her go through all of this. The rest of the fandom really doesn't, but um, that's why I'm here to make this case because this is this is the most important section, I hope you know, because um, it just shows how when you seek forgiveness, um, when somebody as villainous and rude as Courtney seeks forgiveness, everything completely changes around her um, for the better. And it, she just seems like she's become a lot better of a person in the end. Courtney is freaking out because Sierra's back and she starts stalking everyone. Courtney is getting fed up with her team and she's like, well, this is total drama island. This isn't total teamwork island or something. And um, she just starts to conflict with the rest of her team. Uh, this episode is pretty short for her. Uh, Gwen tries to apologize to Courtney. She stumbles upon this trap with a trash bag and then Courtney gets covered in trash and whatever and it just makes her not. What I don't like about this whole like mishap, like um, all this slapstick that results when um, Gwen tries to apologize to Courtney what I would rather do is that we just cut this out entirely. And Courtney's like, well, I'm not going to accept your po apology. And um, I know you just want everybody to accept your apology. The reason why I'm not going to accept your apology is because you really hurt me. You're not showing that much sincerity in the way that you've been acting to everybody. And generally, it just doesn't seem like you're really actually trying to get to become friends with me again. Um, I think that would be a lot more impactful for her as a character, and I think it's just, um, it's, it's a gripe I have. It's not too bad, but we lost a potential really good character moment for her, but not all is lost within this episode. Very short, but, um, it continues her on her arc of conflicting with her teammates. So since they won last time, they get to be in the, um, they get to be in the mansion and, well, the spa hotel, sorry. It's called the spa hotel within the season. And she's getting on the butler because uh, it, she doesn't have the food the way she likes it. And then the butler comes back and it's perfect. And we can see her teammates um, getting food for Sam because he was sent away at exile and Court Courtney doesn't catch on to this. So they give Sam some food and uh, Courtney's like, well, you didn't tell me this. Courtney decides to take care of him as a result, which I find is uh, nice. <laughs> and then Courtney gets up to her old ways later in this episode. But there is this moment within it Gwen, Gwen was crying about not making things right with Courtney. And then Courtney was like, could she really mean this? It, Courtney was outside of the outhouse. Courtney was like, could, could she really mean this? Like, is this, she's, is this actually meaningful for her? And um, I find that the way, the way that Gwen got to show it to Courtney was something she didn't even do on her, uh, Gwen didn't even do it on her own go out of the way to reach to Courtney. But Courtney finds this as really sincere. And it is it is really sincere. I'm really glad that they decided to make Courtney forgive Gwen in this moment because it's, it's a really good moment for both of them. And Gwen has always been the moody type and for it to result in this way uh, makes sense. And in the end, both characters really get a lot out of this. As, as they come by, as the villain's team comes by to attack Courtney and Sam, Sam hides behind, uh, Cor I mean, Courtney hides behind Sam because he's sort of like incapacitated or whatever and um, tries to, or tries to shoot Joe, but she's, shoots Sam instead and then shoots Courtney and then Zoe wins the challenge for them but um 
but they end up switching teams this episode because uh Duncan was acting more like a hero and then Courtney was acting more like a villain because she hid behind Sam so to ha play this angle that Courtney is both a hero and a villain at the same time I think it makes a lot of sense for her character I don't think you can really squarely put her in either box and that's why that's a reason another reason why total drama action is so bad because they put her in this box of squarely villain when she's not like that she's just a bit over the edge at times and that's just how anybody can be but to squarely say that she's a villain just because she's a bit rude or violent or whatever um that's not really getting at who courtney is as a character and for them to play this angle that she's both a hero and a villain is really cool um i think that's a really good writing decision um well they start flirting in this episode um heather's the team leader and um courtney is mad because she doesn't get to be the leader uh, Courtney gets green jelly on her and then gets flung up into a tree and that's really all we see of her this episode so not an impactful episode for Courtney um, but for her to this relationship for start uh, with Scott starts to develop and I think it's a breath of fresh air in terms of her relationships since the villains won the last episode um She's again in the mansion, but they again they have to send somebody out to exile. They send Scott out to exile, and Courtney starts realizing that she misses Scott. Courtney, Courtney, and Gwen were laughing at a joke during this episode, but um, it just sort of gets cut short because she's not really willing to forgive Gwen yet. Um, you know, interesting moment in this whole forgiveness plotline. Gwen, Gwen decides not to go on the rope bridge because she thinks it's going to break. And then Courtney thinks she's trying to sabotage the team. And because of this, Courtney destroys the bridge so that uh, the next team can't come around. But Gwen also can't come around uh, if she's not able to make it around. At the end, um, Courtney is attacked by a deer because the blue moon makes friendly animals dangerous. So the deer starts trying to attack Courtney, but Gwen comes up and he she saves her. And this starts the arc of Courtney and Gwen starting to become friends because she did end up saving her life in this episode. So episode six really isn't much for Courtney. Um, it's just, Courtney's just antagonizing Cameron a little bit. I think she's more playing into the villain role than she is actually uh, being a villain. It's more about the idea of a villain that she's playing into rather than that being her character itself. I don't, I wouldn't take that moment too seriously because I think it's just in a kidding manner. And then Courtney and Scott, um, I spend a lot of the episode together. Don't really do much, but Heather convinces them that they're going to vote Scott, which is just a thing to get Alejandro, um, which is just a thing to get Alejandro eliminated. That um, since Alejandro, or since they're saying that Alejandro is like going around trying to get uh, Scott eliminated because that would make both of them upset. But, um, so then Alejandro plays the, the invincibility statue and then Heather becomes, uh, the person that is eliminated. Uh, not this episode doesn't have much to do with Courtney. This is episode seven, the boxing episode. Courtney takes care of Scott after being pummeled by Fang. Another good quote comes when Courtney says maybe Gwen's paid her dues um and this is her starting to actually forgive her 
Um, and I, I think that's a really nice line. And it's like, um, I feel good for Courtney here because she's just come to terms with the fact that she, this is something that she really wants to forgive. Uh, Gwen and Courtney are friends, but they're forced to fight each other in this whole elimination. And even though they're friends, um, when they fight each other in this elimination, it ends up bringing them closer in the end of all of it, which uh, is really cool to see. Episode 8 is the Regatta one. This this is finally the merge, so there's no longer villain versus hero. Um, Duncan tries to uh, enter Courtney's alliance, but they don't let him join. Uh, Courtney and Gwen team up uh, to get to the end, even though only one can win. Uh, it's just an example of their newfound friendship. And then Courtney almost falls out of the boat and then Gwen saves her and it's really it's it's just them being friends the whole episode um it I think it's showing the end of this whole arc but it does continue it shows the end of this arc for the time being is what I would say episode nine is the one where they're in the cave uh, Courtney falls on top of Scott and they share a kiss. Scott at awkwardly asks Courtney out. That's uh, really nice. I like it better than Duncan and uh, Courtney because the main reason is that the main reason is that it doesn't really um, bother me too much in some of their interactions. And also, I just think the um the fact that they're so awkward, but yet they still do care about each other is um, nice. It's nice, especially two people who struggle to find their own people within the context of the series. Courtney and Scott fall in a hole with Cameron and Courtney. Uh, Cameron kisses Courtney. Courtney starts fighting with Scott uh, and Zeke catches them both, and that's the end for this episode. Um, they break up. It's not too serious, though, because they just, as Chris likes to put on their team, break up makeup, because they're not, their whole relationship is just kind of strange and out there in the first place. But she doesn't have much to do with this episode. Um, because her arc is seemingly resolved, but like I said, it's still continuing. There's a lot more interesting parts coming, um, where you're just going to get to them in the next two episodes. Courtney is mad over Scott breaking up with her because of the whole kissing thing. Courtney and Scott, uh, make up and are a couple again minutes later, which <laughs> it's kind of funny. And uh, Courtney and Scott stick together for the challenge. Uh, Courtney blurts out about her kissing Cameron, and that upsets Gwen because uh, Court because Cameron and Gwen had something going on. It's really weird and really unexplained in the context of the series. Courtney talks about kissing Cameron with Gwen. Uh, Courtney and Scott talk about kissing Alejandro because. Uh, it, it just gets mentioned somewhere along the line because Mal is trying to mess with Mal is trying to mess with uh, Scott. Mal convinces the two to vote for Alejandro, and Alejandro gets eliminated. And we're now entering the final episode of um, All Stars, and the final episode that I'm going to be discussing here today it starts the episode by buttering up to Gwen and trying to shun uh, Zoe. Courtney doesn't want Gwen to be mad, and Gwen just wants her to be in the game, as she puts it. She promises Gwen she wants to take her to the finale. Um, off screen, she made a chart, and then Mal exposes her with the chart and pisses every camper off. The thing about the chart is that it seems like something Courtney would do. 
and the way I can explain it with the way I can explain it with um Courtney how I like the way I can explain it with Courtney is that um the order is Zoe last which makes sense because she doesn't like Zoe um Mike somewhere because obviously she, she needs her eliminated he, she needs him eliminated um Gwen second to last and then um Scott last but to, in all fairness with Courtney why would why would Gwen care um that Courtney wants uh Gwen eliminated when that's the purpose of the game the purpose of the game is to eliminate other contestants that's just how it works if she wants to win which you can't you can't flaw, you can't call it a flaw that she wants to win i'm pretty sure Everybody else has these things made up in their mind. They have these lists, and she just puts it out there. Um, of course, is that a wrong decision? Yes. If she if she wants to ally with her, then maybe um, maybe just try to think about it in your head and don't or don't put this out. Um, it's obviously an act of Mal, a pretty good one, because it because uh, it works pretty well for him. It's a fault. Courtney for this is not exactly something I would do in this situation because the prerequisite for Courtney winning or the prerequisite for anybody winning is to eliminate all the fellow contestants. So then it comes to what do you want to do? You can't put Courtney... Courtney's boyfriend obviously takes priority over Gwen. So like why is she getting so upset about all of this? She, let's let's not forget. She is the one in the wrong. She kissed her boyfriend. Gwen kissed Duncan, all right? And that really made Courtney mad. And we spent this entire season we spent this entire season trying to um see these characters reconcile and apologize and slowly start to become friends again but this is the breaking point the breaking point is some list that doesn't really even matter in the end i mean seriously they make it out of this way to seem like it's some sort of betrayal and i don't really see it as that um and courtney's the one who was gracious enough to give Gwen forgiveness for doing something that she was obviously in the wrong for, even when she was trying to guilt trip everybody. But for it to be Courtney's problem, that just means she showed she showed grace in that moment and never once thought about um she showed grace in that moment and she never once she never um really got anything back she, immediately once that she gives Gwen some grace Gwen just immediately is like nope we're not we're not gonna I'm not gonna forgive you for this uh you're going out I'm gonna eliminate you now and I find that um I find that not good for Gwen I I really don't think this is a good character moment for Gwen what about Courtney I think it makes sense with Courtney. Courtney would do this. It makes sense in a game like this. Uh, to put it out on paper obviously might not be the best idea, but shit. Like, you can't get mad at her for this. I, I really don't think. And it's, um, I think it's just a, a tool, a, a literacy tool to make Mal a villain is to split them up but for Gwen I think Gwen just falls into it so heavily despite um her <laughs> despite her for this entire season it's shown that she's trying to warm up to Courtney 
And she just takes it all back in an instant because some dude showed her some piece of paper. Like, anyways, I think it's time I get into the rest of the episode here. She starts to realize how bad Mal is as a villain. And, uh, she's excited for the challenge and she tries to talk to Gwen, but she's not willing to forgive. I think that's just kind of bad characterization of Gwen there. Uh, Courtney tries to team up with Zoe, but is turned down because I, I think that's obvious because, um, I, I think that makes sense for Zoe. Um, Courtney keeps on, uh, taunting Zoe after this, after she doesn't want to team up. She tries to apologize to Gwen, and it works. And she's like, um, if you, if you want this, if you want, um, me to forgive you, then you're gonna have to vote for yourself. How does that make any sense, all right? Mal made, Mal made Courtney use hot coals and uh, a bird vomit on her Sunday. Uh, she makes it past the finish line, but the twist is that she has to eat her own Sunday for the immunity. She says she. She says she won't, and she loses because of it. And Courtney blames it on Mal. Courtney begs for forgiveness and Gwen makes her vote herself again. And they say the vote was three votes to two in the end. Uh, I'm, I wrote out, I wrote out this for the logistics purposes of this. Um, and either mean Gwen and Courtney voted for Scott and the rest voted for Courtney or Courtney voted for herself, and Mike and Scott voted for Courtney. With Gwen and with Gwen and Zoe voting for Scott. I would like to believe the second one, which is uh, Courtney voted for herself with Gwen and Zoe. Um, and I said I would like to vote for the second one because it's uh but it ju but it just seems like Gwen manipulated Courtney in all of this even though she was faithful uh the whole way I I feel like um Courtney believed her uh it just seems like it might happen I th I like to think the best out of her but even I just think this is a betrayal by Gwen honestly this is just Gwen um, being rude here, and of course you don't have to ally to people, but to go out of your way to vote Courtney, despite her giving you all this, um, forgiveness, it's just rude. Um, it, it really is, and I don't think it's a good moment for her. It's a bad elimination in total. Is Sunday Muddy Sunday the worst episode? No. <laughs> there is so many bad action episodes that people are just willing to sweep under the rug because they want to play into this trilogy theory that the first three seasons were somehow incredibly great uh, in comparison to everything else. Don't, don't, I, I don't buy into that. Um, but this is the end of our season. This is my final statement. After doing this analysis, if you ask me what is Courtney's best season, I, I'm going to say this one. All Stars has some good character writing if you look for it. Don't let random people with cameras tell you to not like something. Courtney started this season off with a bang. Uh, for, forgiving Duncan, but not giving her personality away. Her entire arc is about coming to terms slowly with Gwen, and the confessionals in episode 3 are the cherry on top. Uh, this season is so good 
to look at and it does wonders for their character um, does wonders for their character writing the Scotney parts are really fun and are not extremely annoying like Duncan her being eliminated by her judgment be, uh, her judgmental behavior also holding on to her want to forgive until the end makes me really like her as a character. I, I just hope that was recording the whole time. But we're now at the conclusion part of this video. Um, and I just want to say thank you for watching this video the whole way through. It means a lot to me. Uh, even though I said I would do a lot of editing, I've gotten to the end point and I'm just like, it's too much, dude. This is like two and a half hours. Um, and I even cut out a lot of it as well. It was at three hours before I started cutting stuff. So I'm not going to add clips additionally. Um, I, I'm sorry if that bothers you or whatever. I, I don't, um. It's just, I'm kind of strapped for time here. Today is July 31st, and I'm trying to push this out on time. If not, then oh well. But, um, I had, it's going to take some time between me going to college, uh, and me being here for a while. So I'm trying to get two videos out. Um, I'm trying to hope for a schedule of once a month. Um, next video is going to be Action versus All-Star and um, the differences between the two in their writing. And um, I really appreciate I really appreciate you looking for this content of me just sitting down and talking to my camera, my phone rather, for <laughs> three hours in a row. Um, obviously, I do want to mention the fact that there is parts in this video where I just go like ramble on or I pause. I'm sorry, I'm not the best at talking, but um, confidently talking about something I'm passionate in, such as this, I feel like it'll do me um, it'll do me pretty good in the long run, and it'll make me more confident, not just on here but real life. And, um, I guess that sums that up. I'm, I'm really glad, uh, to have the opportunity to do this. And thank you for watching the video. I, I don't expect too many views. I'm just sitting here talking to a camera. Um, I feel like my ego might be overinflated when it comes to this. I think I bit off more than I can chew within the time period, but, um, I'm really excited to be able to start this. Um, peace out.